Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the series The COVID-19 Pandemic is Still Going On, a series which now seems to take longer than The Simpsons. My hair is also becoming longer and longer. Hopefully we all know the phrase social distancing by now and avoid meeting people. Some brave people keep working, they were maintaining our social systems and infrastructures, but most of us just can stay home. Or can we do something else? Well. The other day I was joining a Zoom seminar where Dr. David Baker talked about his work on de novo protein design. And he said something very peculiar. Gamers and people who enjoy multiplayer games might make a difference by finding a COVID-19 cure. Yes, you had right. Gamers design COVID-19 treatments in a multiplayer game called Folded Right Now. The best designs are then revealed by scientists to try to build them in a the laboratory to see whether they are sufficient to treat COVID-19. Well, that sounds like a good episode, right? My name is Gunn Steinig and today we'll talk about de novo protein design and how gamers might find COVID-19 treatments. Let's first talk about proteins and how we can design them. Proteins are one of the major components of living cells and you might have heard this in school, but proteins are macromolecules which consist of very long chains of amino acids. In humans, we have 20 different standard amino acids and one special amino acid to produce proteins. These amino acids differ from each other by having a unique side chain bound to the central carbon atom. Depending on the side chain which is attached here, amino acids have different characteristics. They might be a bit smaller or bigger or might have stronger or weaker interactions with water molecules. Since we have 20 different amino acids, we can arrange them in many different combinations, which explains why we have so many different proteins. In humans alone, it is estimated that our genes produce over 70,000 proteins in total. So that sounds quite a lot, right? Well, this is quite a big number, but we could make a lot of more proteins. You see, natural occurring proteins similar to organisms all have ancestors. This means that most proteins belong to so-called protein families. In protein families, we find proteins which share similar sequences. For example, the cycling dependent kinase subfamily comprises 26 different proteins. Proteins in this family are often involved in deciding how fast cells should divide. In fact, these proteins are so fundamental that the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 2001 was awarded for their discovery. The important point is that proteins in a protein family share similar sequences. And as a result, we do not find every possible protein in nature. Instead, we find them in clusters. In a laboratory, we can now produce proteins which do not belong to any protein families. And this is what we call de novo proteins. In general, it works like this. We go to a computer and decide how a protein should look like, and then we use the cellular machinery of bacteria to build it. Firstly, we provide bacteria with a DNA molecule, which encodes the sequence for our protein. Then the cell does what all cells do to make proteins. A mRNA is produced by a RNA polymerase, which we've already discussed in the last episodes. In the next steps, the mRNA sequence is translated into a protein sequence. And this is how we can make new proteins. The question now is how we can design proteins to have a certain shape. Well, here we can follow a rule in biophysics. Proteins fold in the lowest energy state accessible to their amino acid sequence. Well, what does that mean? As we've already discussed, some amino acids like water molecules more than others, and we call them hydrophilic. If we now have a protein which has a lot of hydrophilic amino acids on the inside and hydrophobic amino acids on the outside, then it takes a lot of energy for the protein to maintain this shape. It is way more relaxing to have hydrophilic amino acids on the outside as it takes much less energy. At this point, I want to emphasize that there are also other forces which shape proteins. But yes, we can go to a computer and say we want to have a certain shape and then we design amino acids so that we have the lowest energy state. The proteins we design are sometimes much more stable than the proteins we find in nature since we can optimize the structures. Based on this principle, scientists have generated completely new proteins with new features. For example, symmetric proteins were designed to assemble very long filaments. Then bacteria were genetically engineered to produce these proteins and indeed they formed very long and extensive filaments in the cells. This might initially not sound too interesting, but there are a lot of different applications. For example, building synthetic filaments can help us to understand natural occurring filaments in our cells. 
Okay, maybe the second protein can convince you of the novel protein design. For therapeutic purposes, proteins were designed to bind against hemagglutinin. This protein is found on the surfaces of the influenza virus and it's very important for infecting the host cell. Since there's always an uncertainty that our designs are correct, over 7200 proteins were tested in a study. So the main idea was that we design synthetic proteins which block hemagglutinin so that the virus cannot infect cells anymore. And indeed it was found that one protein protected mice from becoming infected with the influenza virus. The great thing is that the design proteins did not provoke any major immune responses. In cancer therapy, proteins also have been designed to mimic the structure of IL-2. IL-2 is a molecule which is normally produced by some cells of our body and it stimulates the immune system. By the administration of IL-2, our immune system can be supported to kill cancer cells. However, patients which have received IL-2 might experience several side effects such as fever, nausea, diarrhea or liver problems. Therefore, a de novo protein called NEO215 has been designed and produced in bacteria. Compared to IL-2, the synthetic protein caused more local responses, which might mean that it causes less side effects. Okay, now we know enough of the wonderful world of protein design. So the question is, how can gamers help to develop COVID-19 treatments? As mentioned in the beginning of this video, gamers can design new proteins in a game called Folded. The aim here is to design a protein structure with the highest score. The score depends on the overall shape of the protein. And at this point you might think, okay, I have no biological background, so how should I design proteins? The answer is that Foley designed in that way that you do not need any biochemistry knowledge. Instead, there are a lot of tutorials you can follow to get a feeling for designing proteins. And by the way, I'm not sponsored by Foley, I just think it's amazing that gamers design new drugs. So have Foley players been successful in last years? The answer is yes. In 2019, it was reported that folded players were able to build protein structures more accurately than experts or automated model building algorithms. Folded players also unraveled the crystalline structure of Mason Fitzer monkey virus retroviral protease. This protein plays a vital role in viral maturation and can be used to design new drugs against different viruses, including HIV. Folded also has a YouTube channel where they talk about current challenges. Some days ago, they gave an update where they explained COVID 19 challenges. This time, gamers should optimize a pre-existing protein to bind more efficiently to a SARS-CoV-2 protein. Optimization here means that you exchange only some amino acids in order to make it more stable and in order to make the interactions with the target more efficient. This might initially sound quite easy, but it's actually very difficult since improving one characteristic often means that another feature becomes worse. So what do you say? Are you interested in joining Foldit in order to find a treatment against SARS-CoV-2? If so, let me know in the comment section. But for now, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please like and share this video and subscribe if you're new here and hit the bell button in order to stay informed about the latest discoveries in life sciences. And with that, I'll see ya.